friends welcome to another video where we've got some new stamps i'm calling it audacity and we've got pesky mice creating mayhem so if you want to know how this was done let's have a look at the materials first of all starting with the masking sheets as you can see i've created masks from the sheets by stamping them and cutting them out we're also using watercolor card and that's the hot pressed watercolor card for our project I'm also using the, these new paints that I have from Kirataki and they are lovely as you can see lots of glorious colours. I'm mainly using the greens and I think I also use black and white so that's for the first layer. So to complement those we've got another prop product from Kirataki and that's the Zig Clean Colour Markers. You can see there I have a couple of peaches, a neutral colour, a lilac and a red. Also, I've pulled out some greens. We've got dark light, um, a bluey green, uh, just a combination. Of course, use what you have. And also, of course, some browns and some neutral tones. Moving on then to the Versifying Care ink pads, we've got Rainforest, we've got Shady Lane, and of course, Nocturne for the stamping. I'm using a little bit of gesso and you'll see why in a minute or two. I'm also using stickles. This one's diamond but any stickles will do. I've pulled out a few light coloured soft pastel pencils. Also some gel pens in white, yellow and black. Uh, Posca pens would also suffice and I have one of those in, in orange. In terms of the brushes, I use this set a lot. It's the Masking Fluid Brush Set and that's just for the gesso. Uh, also the two large brushes from the large set. And uh, optional water, br water brush, uh, you don't have to use that. Now the stamps. First up we have Tree Den, which is the large stem. We have Tree Stem and Hazel, The Witch's Hat, Mo, Mini and Tango. We also have a broomstick from the broomstick set and this lovely star uh, which is called Burst of Stars. We've got Wizardry, Wands and Spells, Playful Pumpkin and Ickle Pumpkin. That's one from a little set. So lots to look forward to and if you want to convert all of that into something a little like this uh, with the pesky mice getting up, getting up to no good and uh, creating a lot of unexpected magic just keep on watching first of all we've got 10 by 6 inches piece of card i'm taking out my lovely paints and we're going to use the greens the white and the black it's a first layer and uh, what i'm doing is to take away the blank page i'm just going to take the mid green and have a, a light layer of that all over and I'm thinking that uh, I want to create light in the centre and a sort of a banky grassy area at the, at the front. So I've moved on to the white and I'm lightening up the centre area. Just like that. And these are nice creamy paints so they're, they mix together well. Now for the sides, um, obviously we're going to put trees, but uh, to give them sort of a, a dark backdrop and to draw in the light. I'm just using the end of my paintbrush to create blobs of paint and the impression of grassy mounds in the foreground. I'm taking the black and I'm darkening up some of those areas. I also carry on with the darker greens to darken the edges. You could of course do this with ink pads, but it's fun and quick doing it with paint added some more black and you see it's darkened up significantly so there's the first layer and we'll begin the stamping so taking uh, the uh, larger tree stem that's the tree den and uh, positioning it there now you can see that it's not long enough but we'll fix that and i'm blending in the bottom there with my finger and just inking up the end of the stamp and uh, carrying on there at the top taking a a fine black marker and taking away the, the edge there where they meet. So I continue on stamping. Uh, it's just to create a sort of border either side and some kind of context for our little picture. And I stamped a couple of those at the other side, just as before. And now I'm taking the, the skinnier uh, tree stem, I'm covering up 
the, the larger branch with a piece of torn copy paper. And I want this to be lighter so it's a second generation stamp and taking the ink off first of all and so that when it stamps it's quite light. Doing that again and as before linking up the top so we have long tall trees. There you are, drying that off. Now I've numbered these uh, masks one to five. I actually do six in the end up because I do the broomstick as well. So that's the order of the stamping really. And as I said, you stamp that onto the sheets and cut it, the little uh, masks out. I'm taking the nocturne and first of all, number one in the masks is the hat. And I've roughly worked out on the page where I want to place these stamps. So you might see little, little black marks on the page. I'm drying that off and then placing the mask uh, in place there. If I can get it on, there we are. Now, I'm measuring one and a half inches down and I'm going to mark that with a pencil because that's how um, the size of the mouse stamp. So I know that I'm going to place my books there just at that mark. And this is uh, mask number two. Give it a quick dry and plop that in place. There we are. Next up then we have the pumpkins and what the masks do is that they put the stamping underneath to the to the front so that um, this little uh, stamp will be uh, in, in front of the other pumpkin. Now you can do it the other way around. There's a reason why I do it this way, which you'll see. But uh, that's number three in place. And then number four is the larger pumpkin. So when the masks are removed, the little one will be in front. But as I say, you could reverse it if that's, that's what you prefer. So number four in place nearly. That's it. So finally then we have the other stack of lovely books and uh, for this to work I'm stamping it slightly uh, over the top of the uh, first stamp so that uh, the first group of books have a flat edge to rest on and look as if they're all one a group of books when the uh, masks are removed and there's my final mask. Now the reason for the masking is that I'm going to do some stamping and I don't want that stamping to go over what I've just placed down but before we do that I'm going to put a couple of the mice in place just to build the picture up and um, give me a sense of what's happening. <laughs> So here we are, here he goes, one of his little paws on top of the book and the other one holding up the hat, the magic hat. That's the first one. And now I decided to put the fabulous uh, broom stamp across that and of course uh, it'll be in the background because it's being stamped across a mask. And I the idea is I want one of the other little mice to balance on the end of this and that's where I've created that um, additional sixth mask just for the end so that that's protected from the additional trees that are coming later. Now mouse number two and these are great little stamps aren't they? They can do all sorts of things and I was uh, just had this in my head that I wanted to do this composition and uh, it's, it's not easy, but when you know how, it's, it's, it's fine. Now I'm taking the lovely Starburst or Burst of Stars, and I love this stamp because it creates such magic. And I'm placing that um, across the broom because that's, I think, where most of the magic is going to emanate. Now a lot of these will be covered over, but it's given me a sense of the picture at this stage and I'll re-stamp them later. Um, but uh, it's uh, a wonderful stamp.
I'll be fixing the pumpkins but first before I do that I put the third mouse because he's a very important mouse because he's the one that is drawing up the magic and particularly in relation to the little pumpkin which you'll see later and so we've got the, th the three of them in place. Now, as I said, we're going to fix the pumpkins and this is a trick if um, when you stamp something and it's obscured by the background underneath, in order to neutralise it, um, just very lightly paint in a, a, a layer of, of gesso.
But I believe in something untold And I gotta know if I'm going insane Cause there's life in the
and it's finally come together I think and uh, it looks it looks like the mice are having fun at least so I hope you'll have a go and I hope it gives you ideas thank you so much for watching and of course um, take very good care of yourselves until next time and above all get creating be brave and enjoy the adventure Bye.